Hi kids, it's Miss Tamika, and welcome to our virtual children's church made just for you. Now we miss you so much, can't wait to see you soon, but until then, we're going to make sure we have things for you every week. So sit back, relax, and look at the great things we have planned for you on today. Hi kids, it's Miss Keita, and guess what time it is? It's time for our HWFC Youth Values. All right, so repeat after me. Number one, love God. Love God because he first loved us. Number two, honor your parents. Honor your parents so that your days on earth will be long. Number three, love people. Love people because we should display the agape love just like God does. Number four, do your best because we serve the best. And number five, guess what? Have fun. We want you to have the most amazing time that you ever had in Children's Church. So I encourage you to display your youth values during this lesson. And guess what? I'll see you next time. Bye. Got the belt of truth. Put on my boots, gotta tell the good news. The armor of God and the shield of faith. Got my sword and my helmet, now it's time to pray. Things first, you got the belt of truth. Hey -oh, hey -oh. Put on my boots, I gotta tell the good news. Hey -oh, hey -oh. The armor of God and the shield of faith. Hey -oh, hey -oh. Got my sword and my helmet, now it's time to pray. Hey -oh, hey -oh. Put on the full armor of God, stand strong against the evil one. Put on. can stand, stand, stand against every evil plan, plan, plan. Now it's time to be strong, strong, strong. He has won. I put on the full armor of God. Stand strong against the evil one. I put on the full armor of God, the full armor of God. I put on the full armor of God. Stand strong against the evil one. I put on the full armor Hello, boys and girls, it's Miss Keita, and how are you? Thank you all so much for joining us for our youth service today. And as you can see from our supplies, what we're going to be talking about today, we're going to be talking about back to school. And I know that you all are so excited and looking forward to going back to school, but you also may be a little bit uneasy because we're doing this in such a different manner. I know that when back to school comes around, you look forward to meeting your new teacher and meeting your new friends and going into a new classroom. Well, that's all a little different this year. You'll be having a new teacher, you'll get to meet her, and you'll have new classmates. But for right now, you're going to be interacting with them using some platform virtually. But we want to encourage you all to know that you can still do it, all right? So listen, the scripture reference for today is 
Ephesians 6. And what we're going to focus on is putting on the whole armor of God, okay? So the whole armor of God is going to help you be prepared mentally to be able to make it through such a different time. All right, so the scripture says in Ephesians 6 and 13, Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you will be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, you can still stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God and pray in the spirit on all occasions. So today, that is what we want to focus on. We want to focus on covering all areas of your mind and your body and your spirit to help prepare you for what you are about to experience. And most of all, you shield of faith because with faith, anything is possible. So let's take a pause and let's watch a quick video that's going to give you a little bit of information, a little bit more information of putting on the armor of God. All right, enjoy, and I'll see you right back. God's story, the armor of God. So part of God's story is about how God gives us armor, and it goes like this. When we follow Jesus, we're a part of God's kingdom. And one day, Jesus will recreate a perfect world for the whole family to enjoy with God forever. But until then, we're in a battle, which means we're part of God's family and his army. See, God's enemy, we call him the devil or Satan, has a kingdom too. And he has his own army devoted to tricking us into believing that we can't trust God or that God doesn't really love us or worse, that God's love isn't good enough. Basically, he'll do anything to get us to stop trusting and obeying God. He pretends to be sneaky, like in the Garden of Eden, when he tricked Adam and Eve into trusting him instead of God. But he really wants to destroy us. In fact, the Bible says he is like a roaring lion, looking for people to devour. Yikes! Kids, how would you feel if you were being chased by a roaring lion? Anyway, the good news is, God has given us armor to defend against all of the devil's attacks. And if you're going to be in a battle, you've got to have the right equipment. So the first thing we put on is a belt of truth. That's because Satan is the father of lies. But when we choose to believe the truth that Jesus rescued us and God loves us, it's like we're wearing devil repellent, so the devil's lies can't get through to us. We also get a breastplate of righteousness. Being righteous means always making right choices. Of course, nobody has done that except Jesus. But see, Jesus took the punishment for our bad choices. So when we choose to accept his rescue, God sees our sins as gone, which means to him, we are righteous. Satan means the accuser, and he loves to make us feel guilty. But we can defend ourselves by remembering how God sees us. Then come your feet. God covers them with what we need to go and tell people the good news about Jesus, kind of like boots. When more and more people believe in Jesus, the devil can't stand it because God's army and his kingdom are both getting bigger. We don't go into battle empty-handed either. We get a shield and a sword. Our shield is faith to block the devil's lies. Worried God won't take care of you? Nope. God promises to give us what we need. Worried God doesn't really love you? Nope. God created you in his own image. Our sword is the word of God, or the Bible. Finally, we get a helmet of salvation, which helps us remember in our heads that Jesus rescued us. We are a part of God's family and nothing can separate us from his love. That's right, nothing. And the best part? We're on the side that wins. So no matter how hard the devil tries to drag us over to his side, he won't be able to. God helps us stand strong and gives us armor we can use in the fight. And that's the story of the armor of God. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. We're in a battle. God has an enemy. 
God gives us armor, a belt of truth, a breastplate of righteousness, good news boots, a shield of faith, the sword of the Spirit, and a helmet of salvation. We're on the winning side. So let's put on this armor and fight. And that's a part of God's story. Hey guys, welcome back and I hope that you enjoyed that video and that you have gained just a little bit more understanding of the armor of God. But listen, I hope that you have the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, your helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit. Listen, all of these things are going to help you get prepared for back to school because we know that it's such um, a different approach to school. But we know with our teachers from our leaders, Bishop and Prophetess, that if we have faith and we believe and we put our minds to it, we can do anything and we can do anything through Christ. So in the forefront of your mind during this uh, entire school year, I want you to remember that you can do all things through Christ. You have the armor of God and you can succeed in school this year, whether you are going back into the school building or if you're going to be virtual at home, you can do it. All right. Now, look, I have some supplies here, right? So. I have um, a couple of things that's going to help you approach your school supplies a little bit different this year, okay? So here, you see this? We have two backpacks right here. And so the backpack will help you to carry God's Word with you. The scripture reference for this is Psalms 119 and 11. Your Word, I have treasured in my heart that I will not sin against God. So. When you see your backpack this year, no longer to carry your uh, supplies, it's to carry the word of God so that you don't sin against him. Amen? All right, let's look at another supply. Okay, we have pencils. You can write out your Bible verses to remind you of God's word. So the scripture reference for this is Proverbs 7 and 3. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you your new approach to the pen, to the pencil or pen, whichever one you like to use, is to record, write out the Word of God so that you can rehearse it and get it in your spirit. So anytime you feel down or you need a little bit of encouragement, if you can't quite recall the exact words of the scripture, you can look at where you wrote it so that it can help you stay strong. Amen? All right. Look at this. We have an eraser. God forgives and erases our mistakes. Amen. The scripture reference for this, Ephesians 4 and 32. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. So this eraser is just like how God erases our mistakes. You will have the ability to erase the mistakes of others and be open to forgive. Don't hold all that stuff in. God doesn't hold anything against us. So you use this eraser to erase the mistakes of others and you forgive and you keep your heart open and clear. Amen. No more holding on to others' mistakes. Erase them. All right. Our next supply, tape, right? Tape helps to bind a ripped page just as the word of God can bind hurts. Scripture reference is Isaiah 61 and 1. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Amen. So we will use this, uh, the approach to tape as God helping us to bind and repair things in our lives. No longer holding on to those things. Allow God to fix it. Let them in and let them fix it, just like we use tape. Amen? All right, our next thing, crayons. All right, crayons. God created this wonderful world in color for us to enjoy. He also gave us a rainbow to remind us of his promises. Scripture reference, Genesis 9 and 16. When the bow is in the cloud, then I will look upon it to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on earth. 
God created us different for a purpose, but it's no, it does not mean that we can all come together just like all the colors are here together in this box of crayons. Amen? All right. A water bottle. Water is refreshing and it can quench the thirst. Jesus is the living water that is eternal. Scripture reference, John chapter 4, verses 13 through 14. Everyone who drinks of this water will, will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that will give him that comes from God shall never thirst again. Living water of God will keep you pure and you will never thirst again. So you use that approach when you think about water. And then our last school supply, here's the book. God's Word is the most important book we have. Math, English, reading materials are important, but the Word of God will get you eternal life. And so the scripture reference, 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, all scripture is breathed out of out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. So the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. So this book here is a, is a reference for you to remember that God's word, the Bible, will get you to e eternal life. It will give you great insight. It will give you reproof and it will guide you to righteousness. Amen. So I pray that this presentation today gives you a new insight on how to look at your school supplies and that this lesson today helps you to be prepared with the whole armor of God so that you can tackle this school year like never before. So before we close out, I want to just pray so that you all will be ready in just one more day. It'll be time for school. So close your eyes and bow your head. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity we had today for a different approach on school supplies. And Lord, I ask that you will meet every youth that is preparing to go back to school. Lord God, I ask that you will prepare their minds to be receptive to their teachers, Lord God. I ask that you will prepare their hearts, Lord God, so that they are ready to receive the new knowledge that is that has been prepared for them, Lord God. Lord, we all know that this uh, approach to school year is going to be different, Lord God, but Lord, I pray that it does not keep our kids from gaining and obtaining new knowledge. May every lesson that the teachers have prepared, may every use of technology that the teachers have prepared, Lord God, may it meet every youth, Lord God, at their educational needs, Lord God. May this time, Lord God, be a time that students will excel like never before, Lord God. And we pray that there will be no hindrance, Lord God, and them being able to learn. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, Lord God. Amen. All right, you all, go be great and have an awesome first week of school, and we'll see you soon. Bye.